The sound of metal legs echoes off the walls of the palace. The ominous sound can be heard even in the deepest and darkest chambers. Little is known and much is feared of the creatures that roam the halls of Jabba's palace. Rumour has it that they are the real creators of the place. These are the Boomar monks, individuals that achieved enlightenment and gave up their bodies in exchange for being brains in jars carried by six spindly mechanical legs. In this video, we'll be sharing the crazy backstory of the Boomar monks. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Boomar monks were a secretive cult of religious hermits who believed that it was only through detachment from all physical sensations that they could achieve enlightenment. They dedicated their minds and time towards pondering great mysteries from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But Omar monks lived simple lifestyles and did not bother themselves with earthly comforts, often wearing very simple clothes and owning very few possessions. Like most introverts, the Baomar monks wanted to just be left alone and actively sought out planets where they could practice their beliefs in isolation. Basically, they were your average minimalist millennials on a spiritual journey to enlightenment. They were also expert healers and would offer aid to anyone who stumbled upon their outposts or monasteries. Young Baomar monks would dedicate years of their lives to studying and there were several stages that marked the spiritual growth of each individual on their path to enlightenment. But Omar monks would be tested after each stage. For some stages, for example, they would be tested on their knowledge on a particular subject or their memory of a sacred but Omar text. Additional tests would also test their logic and reasoning or their ability to detach themselves from their senses by putting them through painful tasks and measuring how much pain they experienced. If successful, the monk would progress along the path to enlightenment, slowly learning how to control their senses, achieving true control over their bodies. Throughout this process, they would slowly shed their different senses, even going as far as giving up speech and only communicating through single words, signs or symbols only understood by other monks. But Omar monks could also give up verbal communication entirely, choosing instead to communicate telepathically. A Baomar monk was said to have reached enlightenment when he was at peace with the cosmos and had complete control over his mental power. An enlightened monk had no more need for their physical body and they would shed their body, preserving only their brain and the mind that lived in it. Their strange practices and hermit behavior led them to build monasteries and outposts in remote worlds like Tatooine, Teth, and Danuta. Due to their mysterious nature, not much is known about the Boomar Order beside the fact that they must have arrived on Tatooine in a few dozen cargo ships around 700 BBY. These cargo ships served as the foundation of their new monastery, and the monks slowly adapted the structure to the planet's environment, building a roof after encountering the first sandstorm. The building was eventually closed off after it was attacked by sand people. The Boomar would keep to themselves for the next few centuries doing the things that monks typically do. At the core of Boomar principles was the strong belief that the only path to enlightenment was by isolating all of their feelings and emotions so that they could focus and enhance the power of their minds. While some would liken their beliefs to the Jedi value of detachment, the Boomar were hermits, not peacekeepers. The Jedi were also much more stoic, choosing to process and set aside their emotions instead of trying not to feel them. Even Jedi Master Luke Skywalker had this to say. I'm not sure anyone pretends to understand the Boomar Order. From what I've heard, when they reach their greatest state of enlightenment, each monk undergoes some kind of surgery that removes his brain and places it in a life support jar. It keeps them from being distracted by physical diversions, leaving them to ponder the great mysteries. When a Boomar reached enlightenment, their brain was carefully removed and placed in a nutrient-filled jar. The host would lie down and they would be given very strong anesthesia to ensure that the whole operation was painless. The process itself was very dangerous, as even the smallest mistake could mean the permanent death of the host's brain. However, through centuries of practice and proper training, Boomar surgeons were able to successfully carry out many transplants. 
After the brain was successfully transplanted, their name would be documented in the Baomar Registry, a thick record of all enlightened Baomars, as well as some of their ideas or philosophical musings. The brains would then be transferred to the Great Room of the Enlightened, where they would be placed on shelves beside other enlightened minds, wandering and pondering about the galaxy's great mysteries for centuries to come. As you could probably guess, separating your brain from your body can be quite a traumatizing process, and there were a few nasty side effects. Separating the mind from the body could lead to psychosis, in which case the brain would let out a silent scream that could last for days on end. With no mouth, they would not even stop to take a breath. While normal beings wouldn't hear this silent scream, it usually disturbed the other brains, and so psychotic monks had to be kept in a separate chamber from the others. While in theory, monks could return the brain back to the host's body, or even implant it in someone else's body, but Omar technology was much more limited and thus was considered very dangerous, especially if the body and the mind rejected each other. Enlightened brains were held in very high regard by lower embodied monks, who could only dream of reaching enlightenment. They were in charge of caring for the brains, replacing their nutrients and getting them anything else they may need. While they had no need to move about, but Omar monks could also have their brains transferred into specially modified BT-16 perimeter droids if they felt like taking a walk. Also known as brain walkers, these monk droids were modified BT-16 units. The BT-16 were a class 4 security droid model made by Arakid Industries. It stood at around 2.3 meters tall, featured six legs, and was equipped with a vocabulator, sensors, and brain jars to house the brains. Standard models also had tame and bark repeating blaster cannons. Early attempts by the Baomar reused an earlier model, the TS Arak series pest control droid, which only had four legs, giving it a resemblance to separatist droids like the OG-9 homing spider, or its smaller cousin, the DSD-1 dwarf spider droid. As we discussed earlier, Jabba's palace was actually built by the Baomar in 700 BBY, and throughout the centuries the palace was inhabited by many types of scum and villainy. The monks were content to lurk around in the deepest and darkest portions of the citadel, and they would continue upgrading the facilities with each passing criminal gang that took over. The first one to take refuge in the Baomar's temple was Alcara and his band of bandits. Alcara was originally a researcher, from the Bureau of Ethnicity and Socialization on Tatooine, who lived in the 6th century BBY. He became corrupt and started a gang of bandits, claiming the Baomar Monastery to be his fortress. He was careful to cut a deal with the monks, allowing them to stay. At some point, Jabba the Hutt took over the palace with his band of mercenaries and bounty hunters. Like anyone moving into a new home, Jabba wanted renovations done, and tasked his architect Darren Flett to make the adjustments. Jabba added a humongous hangar that could store his sail barges and other visiting starfighters, as well as a rancor pit right under his throne. However, Jabba was still unhappy with the lack of prison space, so he killed his own architect. Meanwhile, Jabba was still able to negotiate an agreement with the Boma, giving them free reign of the palace. However, he would sometimes force them to remove the brains of Jabba's enemies. While monks were supposed to be pure and enlightened, spending so much time with criminals corrupted some of the monks, leading them to become spies and informants. Much of what we know about the Baomar was compiled by Shiido senior anthropologist Mamun Hul when he lived with the monks in Jabba's palace. When Jabba the Hutt died in 4 ABY, Many opportunists tried to seize his empire and claim it for themselves, but the Baomar used the opportunity to retake the palace by force, recruiting new members to their cause and killing the rest. One of the people they got to was Bib Fortuna, who had his brain removed in Legends. Many other criminals would try to raid Jabba's palace to loot the place, but there were too many Baomar for them to fight, and their numbers increased as each thief was captured and their brain placed in a jar. So, that's the crazy backstory to the Boomar monks. But what do you think? Would you give up your physical body to achieve enlightenment? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments below.